Hello guys, how are you? This is the second episode on the build of the 1 to 150th scale La Sirene from Eller. A beautiful ship. Um, too few information about it. Uh, some say it never existed. Even so, even so, this La Sirene is a beautiful kit and it really deserves to be on a shelf. If you can, choose one, pick one, and have fun with it. Uh, it's the second episode. I had a lot of footage to um, put on one single video, so I chose to do two episodes. And I really hope you enjoy this second one and final episode of this build. As I already told you, um, I started this kit almost two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, very slowly stopped between uh, two builds and stopped building this one and had an accident. I knocked it off and the red lines paid the price. I just tried to um, salvage what I could. You'd be the judge of that in the end. Even so, I really like this kit and this ship. Now, with all the work, I almost forgot to um, cover some seam lines here on the keel, as you can see, but no problem at all, it was still time for that, so I applied the mesodisol putty, let it dry, and then just sand it smoothly and everything went okay. After I went on, on top of the sanded surface, painted it white and everything just went fine. And the mermaid, La Sirene. Um, to be honest, I started to... I don't have video footage of what I'm going to tell you. I started to paint this one uh, in real colors, color of skin, the lips, the hair, uh, the scales, uh, it's a mermaid. But then I realized in the instructions that she was all gold and it was too bad. Um, I don't have neither um, video footage of me painting her nor uh, painting it her gold. but one way or the other, you find it and you apply it with the airbrush. Even so, it's a beautiful statue.
when building this castle on the ship, its uh, stern, please read the instructions carefully and be careful. First, dry fit the pieces again. There will be some pieces that will need just a bit of an adjustment, just a small sanding here, a small sanding there, but don't worry, they will fit. Um, some seam lines, a few gaps will appear. That's why you have to adjust it first and test the fit always. And that's why I started, restarted building this ship and never stopped until it was finished. Um, I was being able to see its beauty because, let's be honest, even if this ship never existed, there was a La Sirene, but never this one. But even if this physical ship never existed, it is a beautiful depiction of what a ship it was. It reminded me of the Soleil Royale. Uh, the Soleil Royale, which is a hell of a kit, and it's beautiful. And I started to enjoy this build more and more. And for a brief instant, I stopped doing my victory, which will be restarted after I finish this one. And I wanted to take this opportunity right here to thank my most active um, members and supporters here on YouTube, um, namely Far North Mordling, Yarum, Ricardo Carvalho, John Builds Iconic Military Models, Rupert Cars, Rodney Yas, Jamie Saywell, John Grayton, Clint Browning, JJ Model Making and Chris Yao. JJ Model Making and uh, John Builds Iconic Military Models have YouTube channels. Please guys, check them out. They're very, very good channels. Also on Patreon, Cliff Stein, Neil Dobson, Michael Heiss, which is Hamilcar Barkas here on YouTube. I think everybody knows knows every uh, Michael Heiss and, and Hamilcar Barkas. Guillaume, Gary Farrelly, Jason Rucker, Vincent Connolly, Bill Browning, and Almeida, which became a very good and close friend of mine. For those and for all of you that stuck <laughs> with me for all these years and um, every day new guys come in, thank you, welcome, and thank you all for your support. Without you, this channel wouldn't be what it is. We all know that if you want perfection, this is not really the place, but it's fun. It's a voyage on modeling, and I'm recording it and sharing it with you. So for that, thank you very much. And 
here on these small castle turrets, as you can see, they are hollow, they don't have any structure. And if I would glue it on the kit like that, you would see the, the, the paintwork on the interior. So I used black paper, not on all the surfaces, because like this, it looks like a small curtain, and at the same time, stops you from seeing the other side of the hull. So it gives you the, the impression that actually there's a dark surface uh, in there and well, I thought it would give a bit of depth to the kit. And now the red lines. This is the Hello Red Line tool, as you can see. It says left, right, and it's numbered in scale of five, from zero to 40, uh, if I believe, to 35, X, Y, and Z. After you build uh, this jig, you just have to follow the instructions. Do the horizontal lines one by one and then do the vertical on the spacing that the instructions say that you have to, to do. If one line goes to 15 and the other through 18, you just have to start counting and do the exact, as you can see here, do the exact turn at the spot at the 18 spot and so on and so forth it's not complicated it's I do believe it's a bit more simple than it looks like After the net is done, you just wet all uh, the threads with vanillic glue, white glue, wait it for it to dry, then cut and just with some tweezers make the red lines as they are supposed to be done. And here, as I already told you on the first episode, um, I repainted the red stripes. Why not? Uh, why not? There are, there is so much contradictory information about this ship, even the box art, it's different, so why not following the instructions and disregarding the box art image which is a lovely kit very well assembled and paint this stripes red again
Even so, regarding the real La Sirene, uh, the Cheval de la Boissière was the first captain of the ship La Sirene when she was launched uh, in 1772 and was extremely proud of the galleries as well as the stern of the ship. The presence of a crown on the last upper bulkhead, as you have already seen um, beneath the poop deck, suggests the presence on board of a high-ranking person, probably a prince of royal blood. Um, sumptuously decorated and painted, the galleries of La Sirene were in fact so large, you could even find gardens where more than 120 people were able to take a stroll during the receptions which took place here. Imagine that. Out of the three glided and engraved brass lanterns, the biggest was so large that more than 10 men could hide inside. Also, La Sirene had uh, on its length at waterline 65 meters uh, length. Its width at midship beam was 12.80 meters, and its height between the keel and the main mast truck was 63 meters. On armament, it was composed by 50 cannonballs per gun, being 26 cannons, 36 pounders. 24 cannons, 18 pounders, 16 8 pounders, and 6 cannons, 8 pounder. sails. If you really want to see how I make the sails, uh, just click here right now and you will see it on a video just dedicated to that.
And here on the rigging and on the ropes and the masts, the yards, the pulleys, the blocks, if my hand gets in the way or even worse, my head. I'm sorry guys, it's hard to do this. Trying to show every process. Uh, I film with two cameras, but it's a one-man operation, you know, and that is sometimes uh, I am my own worst enemy when filming, uh, but I enjoyed very much doing this. It's not all real rigging, okay? Um, I run out of blocks and pulleys, unfortunately, so I had to improvise. On the sails, I just found some the points and just glued the ropes. But on its on a general idea, I tried to be as true as I could, uh, following the rigging scheme of this ship. Just don't get enough for me. Worry way too much. This folded sail has a story. Uh, I didn't do it. It was not made in my hands. What happens is that father, uh, an old man, father of a fellow officer, uh, passed away. And he gave all his spare boxes to him. And because of time and, and he was just not available into modeling, he gave that to me and explained it all. So I thought that I should put this sail here. It was not made from my hands, but I don't know. I like to think that when he was alive, when he was doing this, that he would love to see these, this uh, sail on a model ship. So here it is. When everything seems so clear and when the problems we carried weren't even problems at all, just don't get enough for me. Weren't even problems at all, just don't get enough for me. And now the masts and the yards. I on this I used some rope and wrapped around the mast just to make it look like it had real rope on it. Uh, I started to paint the indentations, the detail, but then I thought, well, it's better for me to wrap around some thread. And this is what I did in the beginning. I know that these are tarred and black ropes usually um, because my friend Harry told me aren't you going to paint it and I was going to paint it black but then I went back on the instructions and this thread was really white which is strange um, and they are the main um, ropes that make that sustain the masts and uh, at this point I am still thinking if I'm painting black or not and at this stage I just knocked out the kit accidentally the red lines paid the price I just repaired what I could and I opted it not to remove one. Even so, guys, as usual, cheers.
because I had already had an accident, uh, I said to myself, Alex, learn this lesson, get a bigger base, and I got one. So this, if depends on me, will never happen again. And at the same time, gives it a bit of class to the kit. It goes well to the kit with the kit, so here's a bigger base. I placed these cannons on its on this spot and then later we'll paint it in black matte and just give it a bit of dry brush just to give it a bit of contrast. And this huge Fleur de Lis flag was made with uh, aluminum foil. I used three uh, layers, bent it, then primed it, painted it red, three coats of uh, satin varnish and applied the decals and then sealed it all with two coats again. It's important that it is like this because the paint and the varnish has to have a, let's say, thick coat because it's going to wave and we won't, don't want it to scratch and to crumble and also we want to protect the decals. When applying the decals, don't mess with the square of the flag. Let it be like that until the last coat of varnish is dry then you can wave the flag And after some uh, small touch-ups on the paint and checking the work, well it's not perfect guys, you can see where it took uh, the fall, but even so I really like uh, this ship, this La Sirene, and the kit was very good 
Elder is a very old, uh, has very old molds, but with a bit of TLC, they're worth it. I just wanted to thank you guys for um, watching this video and the previous one if you did. If you didn't, go back and watch it. It's the first episode. Thank you for all your support. Thank to my Patreons. Uh, thank to the guys who are here on YouTube with me. Thanks to you all also. Without you this channel wasn't even what it's today. Thank you for watching guys. And as always guys, keep modeling it. Keep modeling. Always, always with a smile. And Merry Christmas.